was an interesting decision there this week published from the Court of Appeal is to do with the drivers, the pizza delivery drivers who work for Domino's Pizza. It's an interesting case. Back in 2018, the Revenue Commissioners held that the drivers who were delivering pizzas for Domino's Pizza were employees. And that being the case then, they had all of the protection of being employees and it would have created significant uh, issues for the employer. The employer had given contracts to all of the drivers, delivery drivers, and in the contracts it said quite clearly that they weren't employees, that they were self-employed, independent contractors and so forth. However, the Revenue Commissioners basically found that the difference between what was actually happening on the ground and the course of conduct between the parties and what was set out in the contract was different and the revenue commissioners were satisfied that they were employees and not self-employed independent contractors and that was a decision in October 2018 from the Tax Appeals Commissioner. Domino's Pizza then or the company that owns Domino's Pizza in this particular instance um, they appealed this decision to the High Court and the High Court looked at the decision of the uh, Revenue Commissioners and looked at the uh, four core issues as it saw it mutuality of obligations, substitution, integration and terms of the written contract. So the High Court looked at the terms of the written contract with a view to making a decision as to whether they were employees or self-employed independent contractors. The High Court also looked at the two questions of substitution and integration. These are questions that will be looked at when any uh, dispute arises as to whether a person is an employee or a self-employed independent contractor. For example, the question of substitution. If I am allowed to substitute somebody for me doing my job, etc, etc, the likelihood is I'm self-employed, not an employee. Because in the ordinary course of events, an employee can't decide they're going to take Monday off and send along their brother or sister or some friend. So substitution generally would not be permitted in an employer-employee situation. So generally substitution would be indicative of an independent contractor situation, a self-employed circumstance. They also looked at the question of integration. Integration is the question of, for example, to what extent is the driver uh, integrated into the business of Domino's Pizza, to what extent does the driver only have one client, i.e. Domino's Pizza, and so on and so forth. And one of the, or the fourth thing, that core issue that the High Court looked at was the question of mutuality of obligations. Mutuality of obligations is where the employer is obliged to give work to the employee and the employee is obliged to work for the employer. There's a mutuality of obligation there. Both parties are obliged to do something. The employer is obliged to give work to the employee and the employee is obliged to do the work. However, if there's no mutuality of obligations, in other words, if I enter into an agreement with you whereby I'm saying to you, I might have work for you and I mightn't, and I'm under no obligation to give you any, and you say that's great, that's fine, and uh, I might do the work if you give it to me, but I mightn't, I mightn't bother my uh, butt doing it. Then there's no mutuality of obligation. This is absolutely critical, because if there's no mutuality of obligation, then it cannot be an employment relationship. Case went on anyway to the High Court, and the High Court agreed with the Revenue Commissioners and held that the drivers were in fact employees. However, the Court of Appeal said that it's widely accepted in employment law in Ireland that uh, the mutuality of obligation is a sine qua non of an employment relationship. In other words, for an employment relationship to exist, there must be mutuality of obligation. And so the provider of the work, if he doesn't have to provide the work, and the person who's going to do the work, if they don't have to do the work, then there's no mutuality of obligation. And you can call that sort of an arrangement uh, any type of a contract you like, but it's not an employment contract. So just to be clear, 
the requirement of mutuality of obligation is the requirement that there must be mutual obligations on the employer to provide work for the employee and on the employee to perform work for the employer. If such mutuality is not present, then either there's no contract at all or whatever contract there is must be a contract for services or something else, but not a contract of service. And a contract of service, remember, is an employment situation. So the Court of Appeal reiterated that each case must be determined in the light of its own facts and circumstances. But basically, the Court of Appeal decided that both the Revenue Commissioners and the High Court were mistaken and had fallen into error simply because of the absence of mutuality of obligation. The question arose then as well uh, as to when you look at the mutuality of obligation uh, situation. In other words, the High Court uh, and the Revenue Commissioners appeared to find that uh, they only looked at the situation when the driver showed up at the premises. In other words, when the driver showed up at the premises and was given a route or a schedule or deliveries to do, then the driver was obliged to do them. And on that basis, the Revenue Commissioners and High Court held that there was mutuality of obligation uh, and therefore the driver was an employee. However, the Court of Appeal agreed with counsel for the company that the question of mutuality of obligation should be looked at before the driver rocks up. In other words, when uh, at the outset, before they go along to the premises at all, do they have to go along? Do they have to take the work? And if they don't have to take the job, if they don't have to take the work, well then the mutuality of obligation does not exist and therefore it's an independent contractor scenario, not an employment scenario. Now I was discussing this with the girls in, or one of the girls in the office there yesterday and she was saying, sure, if the driver doesn't show up, uh, they won't get any more work. But precisely the same scenario will arise if you are an independent uh, electrician or plumber. If you, you know, we try to get you out to our house here uh, and you're not available, well then we're probably going to go somewhere else. And that's just a natural uh, chain of events in an employment situation or an employer or in a self-employed situation rather. In other words, if you're not available or if you're very busy or difficult to get, we will take a view and we'll try and get somebody else. Likewise, in the Domino's Pizza situation, you might say that if a driver didn't show up, then he wouldn't get any more work. But it would still arise that Domino's Pizza may well need that driver the following day or following week or whatever. But that's just the situation with all self-employed situations. So bottom line is the Court of Appeal overturned the High Court decision and overturned the uh, Revenue Commissioner's decision that these guys, these delivery drivers for pizza, uh, Domino's Pizza, were employees and held that uh, the money shot really was the uh, mutuality of obligation. There was no mutuality of obligation. It was stated quite clearly in the contract uh, that was the scenario. And if that's the scenario, then it cannot be an employment situation cannot be an employment contract hope you find this video useful if you do would appreciate if you give it the old thumbs up down below thanks a lot